Hi everyone, uh, my name is Manish Tave. I'm a platform architect in Intel's data center security product division. And I'm excited to present a project talk about um, Intel's open security controller. So here's a <coughs> legal disclaimer that Intel wants us to display. <laughs> and uh, so, okay, so let me, let me step back and talk about, you know, what is the business problem? I mean, why are we doing this? And um, I have like three perspectives, right? So one is, uh, as we see around uh, this week, and you know, we've been hearing you know, that enterprise, enterprise operations and end users really want to start adopting OpenStack, right? And there's a lot of things that are happening to bring, you know, from a business perspective, reduce costs, increase agility, and all that. And amongst other problems, you know, and, and a lot of the discussions happening in the last few, you know, like today and tomorrow and next few days are going to be covering a lot, lot of those and Intel's addressing some of them. But one of the things which are also um, critical from that perspective is the security part, right? So, you know, from an from a end user operations perspective, how do they provide the security in a similar fashion that they have been doing for their current environments? So that's one challenge. Now, secondly, if you're a, from a perspective of a service provider, um, whether you're a cloud service provider or you're, um, you know, like a MSSP, or if you're, um, you know, just a, like telco connectivity service provider, you want to be able to offer security service as an add-on, and you should be able to do it on demand, scalable, as part of a value-added service. And today, it's not easy to do that in OpenStack. And then, from a sec if you're a security vendor, um, you want to provide the same solution that you were providing on other environments to on OpenStack for your customer. However, uh, you know you have to do several point-to-point -point integration, and you have to in, 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 in rapidly in, in this rapidly evolving SDN technologies. And it's like a high barrier, right? Because you're doing multiple integrations and it's gonna cost you at the end of the day. So why is Intel doing this and what is the intent, right? So the overall, the main purpose for Intel uh, right now is to accelerate the adoption of virtualized security function for this project. Um, and then the other one is, you know, being able to, how, how do we do it is to deliver seamless integration between virtualized security functions and there's the end controller. And I'll go more details into the, de uh, as we go uh, in the next few slides. So from a technology perspective, um, what we have seen is, you know, we have seen evolution in data center from a traditional hardware, uh, where we used to have the paradigm of one application per system, to, you know, where we have discrete compute, network, and storage applications, uh, storage um, devices, um, and the traditional hardware, to a virtualized one, where we are going into one application per virtual system, and we're obviously we're virtualizing the, the abstracting the hardware and going into the software-defined data center, right? In the software-defined data center, the application defines the system, and the whole storage network compute become nothing but a resource pool, and you're abstracting the data center. So how do we provide security in this, you know, where we are going into this software-defined infrastructure? You know, if an intelligent scheduler is taking an application and then, you know, scheduling it on top of this resource pool, how does it do that in a, in a scenario where how do you provide security on top of that? So something has to really automate you bring the intent at the beginning, you know, how do you protect your workload, how do you protect your security, uh, or provide security on your, uh, on your application, and then something has to completely orchestrate all that, that uh, into the data center, right? So what is, this, what is this really, what is this role of the security controller in a data center and this type of environment? So, you know, the so-called uh, software-defined security orchestrator, so first and foremost is automation orchestration of the security functions themselves. So as we said, you know, at the end of the day, you know, we want to be able to automate security in a way that we are going to be available for the software defined infrastructure. So taking some, some of the security functionality, like for example, multi-vendor, whether it's uh, IPS, next-gen firewall, or any of those security functions, being able to map those and automatically orchestrate them into the, into the infrastructure. The second is the centralized coordination of the security policy. Again, over here, uh, we're coordinating the policies uh, as it applies to our um, uh, infrastructure, but we're not really managing the policy themselves. So the IPS manager is still going to define what, is, what a signature means, or if it's a next-gen firewall, it's still going to define what the application control policies are. What we're doing is really coordinating the policy as it applies to the workload dynamically as the things are changing. So as we get scheduled, and I'll, I'll talk more about this later. The third one is we're interacting with the infrastructure. So we're interacting with the virtual infrastructure, uh, so in this case, OpenStack, and there's the end controller. So over here, we're doing you know, things like you know, making sure we're instantiating the service, security service in the right place based on the policy and the intent. And then we're also interacting with the SDN controller because we're trying to bring the, the actual you know, insertion, whether it's a simple service security insertion, or it's a bump in the wire, or maybe it's an advanced service function chaining. 
and then the final you know uh, piece is you know doing the elastic scale out of the security so here the example is you know if your web store um, you know has like 10 web vm and your policy says you want to protect the web vms using a web application firewall and you know you have a web application firewall from certain vendor with a certain policy and now your you know your storefront needs uh, your application to to actually scale up so you're going from 10 web vms to 1000 web vms now how, what about your policy which says now you have to go through the web application firewall so something needs to be able to scale up the security and scale down you know when it's not needed and then finally um, so sorry about that um, i guess uh, ch change in the but you know i'll i'll talk through the two bullets here so basically uh, we are enabling the the east west data center security uh, which is you know basic uh, by by doing the orchestration and then we are reducing the threat of the attacks at the sdn and nfe environments so it's very high level of what the security controller does so next let me talk about a little bit of a conceptual architecture on how where it fits in the data center so this is where uh, multiple virtual environments are being considered. So you have the virtual infrastructure management, whose main function is this is the OpenStack and the SDN controller on the, on the top. So there's a data center A, which is OpenStack with, let's say, SDN on top. And then you have a data center B, which is um, you know, the VMware NSX, and then vCenter on the top. And then you have the OpenStack with some um, Mano or some other layer on the top. And then you have the you know, general compute uh, virtualization and network virtualization, maybe containers, a service, or something else in the future. So now we have all these different data centers. And atop, you have your um, security functions, and then which is really something that you've been used to. You know, this is the IPS managers, the firewall managers, and you know, over here also you have the physical appliances. So you can have physical appliances, like for example, you could have like a, a, a firewall at the edge of your data center in the north south, and so on and so forth, right? Now, here's where the security controller comes in. So the main function is the security service automation and orchestration. So you're taking you know, all these different uh, virtual IPS, virtual next gen firewall, virtual web application firewall, virtual application delivery controller. All these are, you know, let's say, in the service function catalog. The security controller is coming in, and these are multi-vendor, of course. And this is security controller is coming in and taking that and you know, distributed as a, as a distributed virtual appliance, you know, it's actually doing the orchestration across all these different data centers. So that's the function that it provides. And then the distributed virtual appliance is nothing but a logical entity here that is used to, you know, let's say a single vendor, like a specific vendor's next gen firewall across all of these data center. And then you're able to centrally manage the policy on this distributed virtual appliance. So what does that give you? It's a very powerful concept because now the security administrator can take uh, the distributed virtual appliance and manage it, you know, like the security policy it needs across all of these data centers. So the, if you if you take it one step further, it's ability to, you know, enforce your security policy no matter where your workload is. So that's that's the ability it brings to the security administrator. So next, let me talk about the technical benefits. I've already covered a few of them, but just uh, real quick. So first is the automated provisioning of the security itself. So this is very important because uh, as we say, you know, the security is becoming more and more important and we cannot really live without security in the advance uh, for, the, for, for this type of environment for software defined. A dynamic scale out, I already covered some of that. And then the policy assigned workload. So this is where you're giving the intent at the top, and, you know, you're able to provide uh, a solution where your policies are still enforced no matter where your workload or applications are being hosted. And then finally, separation of duty. This is where you, know, you can use the familiar tools. So a security administrator doesn't have to really you know, get into the network or the dev DevOps or cloud out administrator, but security administrator can use the security controller to describe the policy that he needs you know, for the different workloads. And then the security controller will make sure that they do, do it across the multiple data centers. So next, let me walk through like a quick um, use case. Um, so this use case um, is, um, um, you know, let me just paint it out here. So, so this use case is, um, let's say there's a three tenants. So three, three tenants um, uh, is a finance, HR, and production. Now, um, if, you're, if you're a service provider, this could as well be your customer A, B, and C. Okay, and then you have your uh, perimeter firewall, which is the north-south, and then you have your network, um, which is the public network, right? So now, here's say, let's say here's the policy that you want for this type of workload. Let's say for your finance workload, and then on the left, by the way, there's a security function catalog, and there are, let's say, three different vendors that you want to use, one for firewall, one for ADC, one for IPS. And let's say the policy says that you want to be able to protect the finance workload, and there are three layers, of course, web, application, and DB. These are the different VMs in a different layer, tiers, we call it. Now, this could be subnets or they could be on the same subnet, doesn't matter, but they are the different tiers and you want to do micro segmentation. Now, for the finance workload, let's say you want to be able to provide, you know, um, next gen firewall being inspecting traffic between each of these three layers. 
Okay, the idea is now you are providing a policy called the finance forward policy, and then you are in enforcing that you know in between the three layers on the finance workflow. On the HR, let's say you don't have the need to do uh, actual firewall, but the requirement to be able to protect against uh, application layer attacks. So you want to provide certain signature, you know, IPS type of insertion. So let's say you want to do a bump in the wire insertion for IPS, and you also want a uh, you know L3 boundary. You know, whenever it goes out of the the tenant, all the traffic you still want to go through the firewall. And then let's say for your production workload, because you're exposing this to the internet, in addition to be able to do the micro segmentation at the firewall level, you're also using a web application firewall, which is what the application delivery controller is. And then you're using that to be able to provide um, you know, the web application um, front end for your web store or, or for, the, for, for the web layer. So now how, do, how, how does that happen? So the security controller is going to take all the um, uh, um, definitions which are there in the security function catalog for each of these vendors, for the three different VNF devices we discussed. And then it will interact with the OpenStack and the SDN layer, and be able to provide uh, the uh, inner connection into the, uh, so basically it's, it's going to interact with the SDN layer, and it's going to interact with the uh, OpenStack, and making sure that the policies that we described are being met. OK, so let me just quickly walk through um, uh, a very high level architecture of why how we would do this. and. I'm just going to paint it real quick. And so let's, let's start with the top level, which is the application uh, itself and the user intent and the policies. And we have the not by interfa interface interacting with the security controller, which is where it's going to you know, take that. This is the policy that we described, right? You know, protect my uh, application with this VNF, with this policy, and so on and so forth. Then we're interacting with the virtualization connector to the virtualization, uh, virtual infrastructure. We're interacting with the SDN controller. Again, we are not doing. In the SDN controller, we're not really going to do any of the SDN functionality. But if the SDN controller has SFC API, we're going to use it, or we'll use the lower level API to do the flow programming. And then we're interacting to do the policy mapping with the, the security function manager, and then also with the um, agents on the VNF itself. Now, the agent is possible to be optional, but if the manager allows you to do certain functionality, then you don't have to go to the agent. So this is the high level I will cover. And then the question is, where, um, where are we going with this project? So I'm just going to uh, just quickly show. Uh, so, so whatever I've discussed here is not just an idea. We are working with some prototype. And we are working with certain security vendors and SDN vendors. And moving forward, we want to take it to a proof of concept and uh, working with early adopter customers. And then eventually, we want to start working with and you know, build a community for end user SDN and uh, security vendors and make it like an open source project. And um, we, we have some information on this uh, right now on intel.com forward slash OSC, which is Open Security Controller. And I also like to call out you know, if anyone's interested in helping out with this project. Again, this was a very, very high level, top level view. You know, there'll be more details on this you know, available soon. But I just wanted to, you know, if anyone's interested from the community, whether it's a security uh, vendor or the end user or um, you know, uh, from a SDN or general from any uh, OpenStack uh, related, you know, I'll be happy to. Uh, engage with them. And uh, I think that's all I had.